Okay guys, this is a Vimeo update. This is where my channels are on Vimeo now. I've decided I'm going to stay on both YouTube and Vimeo. But for those of you who are specifically interested in focusing on this meter thing I'm doing, I've sort of organized the Vimeo videos in a simpler way for you to just go through them. In Vimeo, they have something called couch mode. Um, see, that's over here. So you could go to my channel, and I'll put a video, uh, a link in the video description, so you can go to the page you're seeing here. You can click on couch mode, and the videos are supposed to just roll out in sequence, and then you stop them like you would stop a movie that you're watching when you're in the mood to stop it. Um, so that you can watch any of these channels in order without having to work through the video descriptions and what do I watch first, okay? Um, so it's a simpler way to handle things. Now, it kind of depends on your preference how you want to go about exposing yourself to the vast amount of Bible that covers this doctrine about how God orchestrates time. I've been documenting it basically since 2004. So it's almost 10 years I've been documenting it. Um, if you're going to start the way I did when I first learned it, you're going to want to click on this How God Orchestrates Time channel playlist. It's really a playlist. They call it a channel. Okay? And this is what you'll see when you click on it. It's got its own background. I don't particularly like the font. Uh, it's not very, you know, it doesn't contrast very well. But this is the header video on it, which, you know, is already in YouTube. All this stuff is already in YouTube. All right. But it's organized more simply, and you can just play it sequentially. And then these are the videos that are from the Yapping Most High playlist in order. And all this playlist goes through How God Orchestrates Time. It goes only through the math. The Bible math. The Bible, you know, is full of dates and so-and-so begot so-and-so and when so-and-so is X number of years old or a king ruled for X years. You know, why are all those dates in the Bible? It's to express this doctrine. Okay, about how God orchestrates time. That's why the Bible provides so many dates. The trouble is the scholars screw up how they read the dates. I'm sorry, but there's no other explanation for it. They don't read the dates right. And so every denomination, every denomination in Christendom, including the dispensationalists, and I'm part of the dispensationalist crowd, they all get it wrong. Some of them get it just a little bit wrong. And, of course, the preterists get it all together wrong. They get it wrong. So that's why there's all this debate about, well, the Bible's dates are wrong. No, the way you read them is wrong. It's embarrassing. So I had to go and create from Genesis forward a whole timeline using only the Bible. So the math that results that you can prove yourself in Bible is all here. And then all the links to how, you know, to the documents that support it and the, you know, the explanations. All the different things you can read are in the video descriptions. But if you just want to learn the math and then go back and do your vetting, just play this playlist which is called a channel in, video, in Vimeo. Just play it in order. And it'll walk you through the math. I start out real simple. And here's the worksheet where I took all the Bible numbers. Just the Bible. So you can prove it yourself. I took all the Bible numbers and I plotted them out. Okay, I didn't use estimates outside the Bible like everybody else does. That's why the Bible seems to be wrong. People aren't using it. They're using stuff outside the Bible, which is wrong. 
And therefore, they go back to the Bible and say, well, the Bible doesn't agree, so the Bible's wrong. No, just use the Bible and you'll see how it fits real history that you can prove anywhere on the Internet. The Bible's right. It proves its own self right. But you've got to use it. Well, people aren't doing that. So I did. So I spent a lot of time on the math. This is the history that results going through the real people in the Bible and what timeline the Bible itself is giving you and why that timeline is right. And it goes on for like four pages. Okay? So that's what this channel is about. Okay? Now, a lot of other people are going to say, well, you know, that's just math, yada, yada. You know, because people hate math. They're stupid to hate math. Well, where, where's the other proof? Okay, well, here's another channel. Psalm 90, I documented in Hebrew. See all this Hebrew at the top? The timeline of the Bible using the same numbers as is in the explicit text is used as meter from Psalm 90 forward in the Bible. Psalm 90, Isaiah 53, Daniel 9, and then it goes forward in the New Testament, the Magnificat. They're all chaining on each other using the same meter to give you an annual calendar from Adam forward to Christ. That's what they used it for. Okay, so how, how do you prove that in the Bible, Bray, now? Yeah, well, here's a way you can prove it with any passage you want to look at. Use this video here, this Bible Hebrew character, Hebrew meter characteristics. Just download that and apply it to any Bible passage you want. And then you'll see it for yourself, proving it yourself, without brain out being involved. Because the characteristics are always the same. And there are 30 of them. And they're real sophisticated. All you have to do is be able to parse syllables, for crying out loud. Even a five-year-old Greek or Hebrew kid can do that. All right? So this is extensive, sophisticated documentation. I try to keep it cute and simple in some of the videos proving it directly from the Hebrew, starting in Psalm 90, because all the Jews know that Psalm 90 is God's calendar of time. No Christian knows that, because the Christians and the Jews aren't talking to each other. And then I show it in Isaiah 53, and then how Isaiah 53 and Psalm 90 interact. And then eventually I get to Daniel 9. There's extensive download links in each one of these videos. Just watch them in order until you throw up. Okay? And there are extensive Word docs and, you know, the, the worksheet, all kinds of documents are in the video descri descriptions so you can stop and personalize it and vet it yourself without the videos. Okay? This is extensive Bible proof. It's taken me since, what, 2008 to compile it. I've been working almost nonstop on this since 2004. Okay, fortunately I have a kind of business where I only have to work a few months of the year. Okay, and God gave me the time and the money to do this. All right, so if you want to know the sophisticated version of it, start here with Psalm 90. It's the same thing as my Psalm 90 playlist, but it's a little little simpler, organized. Okay, and then after that, there is a overweening precedence that goes all the way back to Noah. Now, I haven't completely done this yet. I'm still working on it. But there's a guy named Jack P. Lewis. He wrote his dissertation on this, The Precedence of the Flood in Jewish and Christian literature. That was the title of his dissertation. It cost $124 and you can buy it in Amazon. My copy I think cost $100 because I bought it before it was sold out. And he doesn't really come to any conclusions and I, I don't use his material in my videos. But this is straight from Genesis 7 and 8. I just walk you through Genesis 7 and 8 and then I compile a timeline of Noah's flood to show how the Psalm 90 videos are basically talking back to Genesis 7 and 8 for their precedence. It's really amazing.
And as a side note, Harold Camping screwed up because he didn't read Genesis 7 and 8 properly. And then God silenced him by giving him a stroke. God did the same thing to a member of my own family. That's how come I understand it. Okay, when you screw up Bible interpretation and you misrepresent it long enough, God will knock you down. Okay? And that's what happened to camping. You don't want to have that same fate. You want to understand where prophecy comes from. It's precedented in the flood. So then, and these are all videos on YouTube, Pass the Salt, Bypass the Flood, most people have seen that. That's a popular video of mine in YouTube. And uh, I reworked it a little bit. And then this is the Noahic Precedence from Pass the Salt Part 1, which is not in YouTube except as a link in the video description. So this is the actual video. So you don't have to download it, you can just watch it. And that's all the videos there are here, plus the worksheet. This is the worksheet again. So those are the three basic channels that I'm, I've set up so that you can get acquainted with the God, how God orchestrates time doctrine. Again, this one here is the math, okay, and its channel looks like this. This one here covers Psalm 90, and it's basically the Psalm 90 playlist, but, you know, in a little simpler organization that's in YouTube. And then this is the Flood Precedence playlist, which I don't have a counterpart to it in YouTube, but each of these videos is in YouTube. Okay, now, on top of those, I have a whole bunch of playlists in YouTube, which are GGS, Mary Magnificat, now the Peter playlist. Um, eventually, I will be moving those to Vimeo also. Meanwhile, if you want, um, you can go to YouTube and look at these playlists in YouTube, okay, which are here. I have a lot of playlists, so that's what makes it hard to look at it in YouTube. But the, the playlists that focus on how God orchestrates time in the New Testament, because it follows the same rules, okay, are this GGS, God Meters Time, okay, God Meters Time, Episodes 10 and 11. This just focuses on the Pauline meter, and it's got all the word docs in it that you could ever want to prove it. Okay, and then um, the Mary Magnificat, which is right here. This is probably the simplest Greek playlist to look at if you want to see the Greek style of, of the meter, the time meter. Okay, so that's the Mary Magnificat meter of time. And then um, the next one that I'm still working on now, this is an update to the Pauline um, to 11 GGS, but it's part of it, okay? And then the latest one that I'm doing, because I just discovered this a couple of weeks ago, is Peter's Meter, which is also reflected in the RFG playlist, because Peter's Meter helps us prove that Mark's Gospel is third, not first, okay? And so starting here where Peter's Metered, I go through Peter's own meter also, because Peter's basically on the same thing of theme as Paul, and he's playing to Paul deliberately. And I'm at, at the moment I'm up to how Peter um, is documenting the future up to uh, Marcus Aurelius. Okay, and I'll be posting more videos on that in the next couple of days, because Peter is mapping time just like Paul does, all the way to Odovacher. He's mapping the denouement of, of church in the future, all the way to Odovacher for Rome, and all the way to the establishment of the Roman Catholic Church under Constantine, which the Bible considers apostasy. It's a bad thing. It's so bad that Bible basically says that the chance of the rapture happening after that is almost zero, because church just won't mature as a result. And so that's what I'm documenting now. So, you know, if you want, you know, go look at those videos in YouTube, and eventually I will put them all 
I will put them all in uh, Vimeo, but I haven't done that right yet because, you know, I've got a thousand videos to do. Okay. So that's about it. GGS, God Meter's Time. Okay. The um, Mary Magnificat playlist, which is what Paul is playing his meter to. And then the Peter playlist, which is right down here. All right, those are the ones in, in YouTube that are not yet on Vimeo. And in Vimeo, again, this one just covers the math. This covers the Psalm 90 background and precedence. And then this covers the flood precedence for Psalm 90. Hope that helps. If not, yell at me. Peace out.